and you can see the little small piece of bone inserted in the surgeon. Dennis, that is incredible. Ahead of their time. Ahead of his time. And here is from a mummy, an Egyptian mummy. And on the inside, you see the spiral screw cork who had had knee surgery. They found on Saqqara the Egyptian physician's bag that dates 4,600 years ago. 2,600 B.C. that they were doing skull surgeries. Now, this is another mystery of ahead of their time. This is called the Saqqara glider. Yes. This little glider model was found in 1896 at Saqqara in Egypt. Uh, just a little ways, about 16 miles from the Great Pyramids and another pyramid complex at Memphis and Saqqara. And it was put in a box down in the museum basement of the Egyptian Cairo Museum. Uh, only 5% of all the Egyptian treasures on oh, display. 95% yes. yes. we don't see. They're building a new museum. But in 1971, uh, Egyptologist at the museum opened up the box and found this inside and he used to build model gliders. It shows the evidence they knew something about aeronautical engineering. The aerodynamics, and aerodynamics are splendid. And it has the frame, no bird has this, and it Correct. shows evidence that it had a motor on it at some time. It was a child's motorized glider. And NASA, the National Aeronautic Space and Air Museum at the Smithsonian, has written me a letter saying this is the first example of flight from 1800 B.C. Astounding but and ahead of their go, times. Wherever we go around the world, we find surgical instruments in these different civilizations that they did brain surgery, trephining, 60 to 80 percent of the people uh, lived, and uh, they had also did heart surgeries. The Marmajan Expedition. Uh, to uh, Turkmenistan in 1969, the USSR Academy of Science report, they found eight skeletons of Neanderthals that had open heart surgery, mm. that they had gone through the cardiac window like a modern heart surgery, opened it up, used some kind of forceps, and did surgery, and then there's healing afterwards, that they had the ability, they weren't primitive, they weren't beetle-browed, bow-legged, barrel-chested, no. bumbling brutes, hairy back, stooped, soldered, club-carrying, you know, peanut brain, drooling, knuckle-dragging savages. They were not just primitive and archaic. They were advanced. We have Shamu surgical instruments from Peru, 450 A.D. to 750 A.D. They used for abortions. We have a Celtic surgical toolkit, 2,000-plus years old. The medical kit of the doctor provided proof of tonsil and cataract surgeries. In some of the mummies in Peru, we have found evidence of fine sutures and uh, one of the skulls, very, very thi fine metal wire for a brain surgery. And so these truly amazing surgeries, these people were way ahead of us in oh, their time, yes. as you say, and they were, they, there was a, there was a kind of bias that surgeons had against them. And they said, hey, this can't be that they were that advanced when they first found these skulls. But I also brought with me a number yes, of the artifacts. in these closing moments, Let's take a look at actual artifacts. Dennis, this is an astounding program of information. Very quickly, would you tell us what's here? Well, this is uh, the beads. The, the uh, outside has been replated. But this is the Egyptian woman's necklace, a common housewife mm. would have worn this in around 1600 to 1800 B.C. This now belongs to the Queen of Beaverton, my wife. But there's yeah. this small beads and how they drilled through them on this necklace. And... This is carnelian, a very, very hard material, and they carved through it like this. They also made the first synthetic paint, Egyptian blue, that lasts for thousands and thousands of years. A small pot was Remnants found of, it, of, of, still. of Egyptian blue was found at Pompeii in 1814. It's just recently we found out some of the formula, 900 degrees Fahrenheit, and the chemicals they used. This will last for thousands of years, some of the blue paint. And then we have an array of various surgical instruments. But let me show this one from Peru. This surgical instrument has a piece of obsidian at the end. And under 10,000 power magnification of a microscope, a stainless steel surgical scalpel, modern one, shows pits and grooves. This has you. those pits and grooves. And when they used it for surgery, it cuts cleaner doesn't bruise the uh, cells as much, and you heal faster. In fact, Donald Crabtree, an archaeologist, when he had open heart surgery, provided them with obsidian tools for his heart for surgery. For his heart surgery. This has been an astounding program today. Uh, ahead of their time, 
they uh, had uh, developed and were closer to creation, had developed techniques and anticipated problems and the solution to those problems well ahead of their time. But let's close the program with another emphasis here. This came from an Egyptian tomb. It is replication for a servant to serve the Pharaoh in the afterlife. I visited Egypt decades ago and found that the, the beetle to them was the symbol of immortality. They were longing for immortality. And uh, the pyramids were built in an attempt to outlive this life beyond death, an attempt to escape ultimate death and to have immortality living forever. Their longing was genuine. All peoples long for immortality. There is one who has made it possible. As a child, he went down into Egypt. Out of Egypt have I called my son. And he did not learn his arts from Egypt. He was the God, the Creator in the flesh, who was the expression of the Father to heal our diseases and especially to mend our broken hearts and then to cover our souls with his blood. He went to Calvary, died, rose again, lives, and at this moment wants to be invited into your heart. Would you pray this simple prayer with me? Just pray it from your heart. Dear God, like the ancient Egyptians, I long for immortality. All the avenues and ingenious expressions can't get me there. It's up to you to do it. Right now, I open my heart to you. Lord Jesus, this moment, step into my heart. I invite you to be my Savior, and I will serve you with all my heart. If you prayed that simple prayer, then you exceeded the wisdom of the ancients. Thank you.